When it comes to tube amplifiers, the truth is they aren't for everybody. Depending on the amplifier in question, sacrifices are made when moving in the direction of glowing glass. Whether it's a soft top end or weak base, it seems that many of you guys out there have had this exact experience and walked away without thinking twice about another tube amplifier purchase in your future list of upgrades. With that being said, while many of these experiences are totally valid, it's also been my experience that with all things tube amplification, the devil is in the details. While throwing a ton of money at these amplifiers ain't always going to hit the bullseye we are aiming for, the reality is sometimes you do get what you pay for. In the case of this little amplifier, truer words have never been spoken. That's right, folks, and with the Audio Hungry A20 I, you will indeed get what you pay for. And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Welcome back to New Record Day, my name is Ron. If you are into two-channel audio, consider yourself an audiophile or music enthusiast, welcome home. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell notification so you know when the next video drops. Before we kick off today's video, I just wanted to give a shout out to Well Pleased AV who is sponsoring today's video. Mark Sosa is the guy you wanna chat with if you are interested in audio hungry products, but Keep in mind, he also handles a wide range of hi-fi brands, which you can check out in the link down below. As always, a huge thanks goes out to Well Please for the sponsorship, and huge thanks goes out to Mark for believing in what we are doing here at NRD. Rated at 20 watts per channel, the A20i is an all-tube Class A integrated amplifier featuring three unbalanced inputs, a remote control, and the option of buying the amp in either chrome or black. Current street price for the black is $5,000 and the chrome is $5,500. The tube complement is four 5881s for the power section with two E88CCs and two ECC83s for the preamp section. The amplifier's functionality is very simple. From the front, you are greeted with a volume control and also an additional ring around the volume pot which changes the input selection. While doing so, little LED LEDs indicate which of the three inputs you are using, which is a nice and classy touch. On the business end, it doesn't get any easier. To the left, you will find three high quality RCA jacks for the inputs and a pair of high quality sturdy terminals that offer five way connections to your speakers. And last folks, to the right, an IEC socket for power. Speaking of power, the rocker switch is off to the left of the amp and with the flick of a switch, you're ready to rock and roll. Also, the A20i does come with a nice looking cage which protects the amp from curious hands and keeps the tube safe and sound for years to come. Last but not least, for folks who demand remote control, I have good news for you. With the A20i, you won't be given a piece of silly plastic as an afterthought, but instead an all steel remote which doubles as a self-defense tool in case of intruders. In terms of remote functionality, you are given the ability to change volume and mute the amplifier. Yes, it would have been nice to see the ability to change the inputs, but for me, that's not a deal breaker. One thing to keep in mind is the A20i is intended to be used with eight ohm loads, but the manual does mention four ohm loads as possible. Just keep in mind, the specs of the amp will obviously drift a little under those difficult loads. I spoke with Mark about this and his advice was the following. If you have settled on a four ohm loudspeaker and don't see yourself making changes anytime soon, you might wanna consider the A20i's bigger brother, the A50i. I'll leave links down below for that amplifier so you can check it out. Now, with that being said, I've had this amp on anything ranging from four to eight ohms without an issue whatsoever. The sapphires are rated at four ohms, the concepts step down to six, and the Autica's sit at an easier to drive eight ohms. Because I'm not settling on a specific speaker and not exclusively using the amp for four ohm duty, I can probably get away with it. Just be mindful of this feedback, and by all means, reach out to Mark if you have any other questions, that's what he's there for. 
Folks, as far as I am concerned, one of the most egregious offenses a tube amplifier can make is not giving us a holographic soundstage. Some of the cheap and cheesy tube amps out there might light up the tubes or double as a warming station for grilled cheese sandwiches, but personally, I'm not impressed until I can close my eyes and just hear the performance in the room. Obviously, speaker setup is the real key here, but listen to me here, folks. The disappearing act is step one, and what is packed into the stage is step two. So let me ask you this question. Do you want paper cutouts of the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, or insert any of your favorite bands here? Or would you like the illusion that they are actually three-dimensional? When you close your eyes and you listen, you actually get a realistic sense of them in the room with you and they are indeed standing there. Folks, when tube amplifiers are firing on all cylinders, this is the result or the sum of everything starting with the tube, the quality of the parts and the topology, the quality used in the transformer, and I dare say yes, even the quality of the connectors being used in the amplifier. Remember when I said the A20i, you get what you pay for? Well folks, to put it simple, holographic staging is a result of this little amplifier and that is exactly what you're paying for. One of my absolute favorite artists to listen to when judging female vocals and exploring all things soundstage is the wonderful Dominique Fils Amy. I can't pronounce her name, I'm sorry. Her latest release, Three Little Words, is a must have when judging holographic images because this record, folks, it was blessed with some of the best mixing I have heard in years. When listening to Tall Lion Down with the Oticas, Sapphires, or Concept 500s on deck, the A20i showed me a picture-perfect presentation of the stage. And in the middle of the stage, the harmonies that surround her main vocals sit about a foot more forward from her, and with harmonies that literally are playing behind her as she sings. Folks, because we have a holographic stage to work with, this does not sound like a wall of sound, and even more, we have some legit distance from one harmonic voice to the next one. In short, folks, having spent time with a lot of tube amps over the years, I can tell you some can do this type of holographic imaging well, and some can't. The A20i is one of the amps that aces at holographic imagery and keeps pace with some of the best that I've heard so far. Another thing that I've noticed with this little amp is that while I'd argue it does ride the edge of being slightly smooth, what I ultimately hear throughout the entirety of its bandwidth is a straight line performance. Folks, that is to say, for those who have had bad examples of tube amplifiers, the A20i will quickly dismantle your misconceptions in not only top end extension, but bass dynamics as well. Now, taming the hyperbole, at some point physics will show up and certainly give you the bird, but let me be clear about this. For listeners who are being smart about appropriate pairings, you are going to be blown away by just how far 20 watts will carry you across the finish line. I've been surprised at how many speakers I've had in for review that the A20i had no problem driving them with complete success. Listening to Lateris by Tool. Oh, you thought I was messing around when I said this amplifier can boogie. Well, I wasn't. It was obvious, even at ridiculous volume levels, if you were to blindfold me, there is no way in the world I would have walked away from that session saying nonsense like, man, that bass sure was weak, or the top end was really soft. If anything, the opposite was true with the A20i, and it wrapped its iron fists around the sapphires, oticas, and concepts, and showed them who's really boss. Being concise, and this is the point here, this is not your grandpa's tube amplifier, especially when it comes to playing the entire bandwidth and again, will absolutely control most speakers out there with authority as long as you aren't being ridiculous with bottom of the barrel sensitivities. So, sorry Maggie fans, this is not the amplifier for you. So while I've made the argument that while a tad smooth, this amplifier is indeed a straight shooter, 
but let's make sure we hold the mid-range to the light and get this part correct. While the mid-band performance is not the only thing this amplifier is all about, it really is one of its most salient attributes. The cliche lit from within character, it does apply here, but more than that, there is something just liquid about the mid-band performance. That is to say, if you have heard dry, sterile, or chalky sounding mid-range, this is the exact opposite of that. Both male and female vocals take their places on stage, and when you get the juices flowing through the speakers, you are rewarded with a performance that forgetting all the ridiculous word salads we use as audiophiles, it just sounds natural. In a sense, the music just has life to it. And there indeed is a connection to the performance that's hard to put into words. You know, the same thing can be said about all things acoustic. Lately, I've been exploring Rune 1.8 and diving deep into the rabbit hole of acoustic guitars. Track after track, I have found myself drawn into the music and literally there have been times when I find myself leaning into the performance because it's just so dang inviting. You know guys, when a speaker, amplifier, or anything else for that matter makes me wanna keep exploring and listening to music, I know that's the kind of rig I'd personally end up with when I'm done with NRD. And you know what? That's exactly what I experienced with the A20i. Guys, the A20i is legit. And priced just north of 5K, let's get real, it should be. Does it run circles around the more affordable offerings from past gear that I've heard from other manufacturers? <sighs> you know what? It depends on which amp we're talking about, and even then, it's never that simple. I'll say this, the A20i strengths is that it does do some unique things in a very small, easy to use package, and that will surely be a one and done solution for a lot of audiophiles out there. Does it beat the flexibility I found in the Manly Neo Classic 300Bs? No, and it surely sounds quite different from those amplifiers as well. Remember when I said, with tube amps, the devil is in the details? Well, there you go, that's another example. I'll say this much, the price of swapping these tubes ain't gonna break the bank and will be easier to digest for those of you who decide to roll the tubes. In closing guys, I'm not done with the audio hungry lineup and I want to invite Mark to keep funneling me their amplifiers as I progress as a reviewer. As for the overall performance I found in the A20i, it's a winner and it's an easy recommendation. By all means, smash the checkout button on the A20i if you have an 8 ohm load and reasonably sensitive speakers, I'd say mid to high 80s and above should be totally fine. I'm a big fan of this little amplifier, and if I was using it exclusively with the Oticas or even the Concept 500s, I'd be good to go. And I believe with all my heart, you would be as well. All right, my dudes, I'll see you guys in the next video.